gaming, game development in many of the larger yeah. cities around the country and the world. And we can also help out with BizSpark programs. Yeah. Um, the Unity developer offer. So Beautiful. this is new. You can get a device through this. Uh, it does require that you publish your application uh, first. It can be in a beta state. So you can put it out into the store okay. as a beta. So yeah. it's not actually released to the world yet. Uh, but you can add your friends' accounts on there and let them test the game. Right. Once you get to that point, um, the the person running the offer will be able to send you a test device to yes. start debugging on. That's part of our own ongoing relationship right. and, and growing relationship with Unity and Microsoft. Yep. And so it's great, the level one. Um, level two, let's go, oh, there's no slide. Windows Phone, uh, so WPDevCenterOffers.com will have all the information Let's actually just us. go to the site. Perfect. Since we don't have... Looks like we have two tiers at the moment, level one and level two. Why don't you zoom in a little bit real, there, real quick there yep. so I can get a better understanding of what level one and two actually entail. Okay, so, uh, you know, create or port your game. Okay. Right? So if you've got a, a great innovative game on another platform, um, that meets some kind of minimum download requirements, yep. then we definitely want you to apply to this. You get, uh, this is a great way to get Windows 8.1. Yep. A uh, $100 voucher to the Uni Asset Store. That's Sounds huge, good to right? me. You, I could go buy Pro Builder or whatever right now, right? Right. Uh, or, or any additional plugins you just don't have or are looking yeah. at. I mean, Shader Forge just won a bunch of awards at Unite two weeks ago, so. That one developer device bullet point there, yep. that's what we were just talking about. Uh, so you can choose a phone. Uh, priority review for Windows Store promotion. That's huge yeah. for marketing, discoverability, user acquisition, all these great terms for uh, getting discovered in the store and selling your, your game and right. making money. Um, level 2 looks like it has everything Level 1 has and even more. So why don't we go into detail about that? Yeah. And so uh, once you get through Level 1, yeah. you can get promoted. And I think you know, there's a selection process for this up to Level 2. Um, you know, and we're looking for the universal apps on this at yep. this point, right? Um, again, if you go down to the benefits, we get uh, a million impressions uh, from Ad Duplex. Can't say no to that. Thousand bucks. I like it. A free advertising. That's awesome. Anything free is for me. Um, a, you know, a voucher to the Microsoft Store, so I can go on there and uh, maybe I can buy. I can apply that to a new device, or yeah. maybe I don't have an Xbox One yet. I can put it towards that. Perfect. We just a nice price drop for it. I can buy the collector edition of Destiny. Which just came out today. Came out today. Yeah, we should actually go play that as soon as Did we Did you bring it. your Xbox One? No, but I thought about it, though. Yeah. Darn. Okay. Anyway, so uh, feature placement in the Made with Unity Gallery. Again, that's huge advertisement for your game. Absolutely. Uh, that is on the Unity 3D website. People clicking through, and they go, oh, okay, I've got a Windows phone. I want to see what games are available for Windows phone. Mm-hmm from Unity, yeah, or, or built with Unity. It's essentially their showcase. Yeah, and you get into that gallery, it's great. And again, the priority review for, uh, for promotion. Okay. Uh, top three candidates each month. This is the biggest selling point for me. Unity Pro license. I like that. It's fantastic. Yeah, can't say no to that. Up to $1,500 in value. Holy cow. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting. And this is brand new. This is really cool, I just noticed this the other day. Top three candidates get priority consideration for the ID at Xbox program. Right. So it doesn't mean you're going to the program. It means that they are guaranteed to take a look at your, your title and work with your team to understand where your current goals are. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's all I have. We yeah. got anything else? No, I think it's been a fantastic day of kind of working together. Thanks, everybody. Um, I think we got, do we need to do some promo for tomorrow? Okay. Please take the, the poll. Yep, so if you notice at the out. bottom of your, your chat screen right there, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a poll um, asking questions about perhaps uh, where you're located in the country, where your current role is, whether you're a student, a developer, or even a Microsoft employee. So please take time to answer those questions. Thank you for attending today. We do have uh, five more modules of great content tomorrow. What starting, time is that starting at? Do you uh, know? 9 a.m., right? Same time. Same time, 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, Pacific Standard Time, yep. U.S., right? So we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks again, everyone. This is Jason Fox. I'm David Voiles. Thank you for joining us today.
there's a little preview of some things to come. Welcome back to developing 2D and 3D games with Windows, uh, with Unity on Windows. Welcome to day number two. We also have a great day of content for you. I'm just excited today as I was yesterday and I was pretty amped yesterday. <laughs> so this is gonna be a good day. We've got all sorts of great topics, but Matt, a little bit about yourself first. Um, so I'm an indie game designer. Um, I have my own studio called Subscience Studios. We're based out of Orange County, California. Um, recently completed work on a game for the band Avenged Sevenfold, coming out soon for all mobile devices. Um, before that, I did a game called Grave Stompers, which was kind of a zombie-based game, which fits in nicely with what we're doing today. Um, you can check that out on all devices. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I've worked as a digital artist for about 12 years in the industry. Uh, started in music and entertainment back in the day, kind of got into websites, and then fell into games about four, four or five years ago, and I've just been doing it ever since. So. Love games and excited to show you guys what we got going on today. Pretty cool. Definitely yeah. check out your website, MatthewNewman.net, where yeah. you have some cool tutorials up there. The Rhino, I think, is going to be posted up there from yesterday. Yeah, the Rhino from yesterday. So if anybody saw what I got started with yesterday, we're actually going to have yeah, the full Very version cool. of that <laughs> up. Probably, yeah, by the end of the day today, we'll show Very that nice. off and people can Very download nice. that. And um, also, there's a lot of speed painting tutorials and stuff like that if you want to see that. But um, anyways, yeah, let's get started. And, uh, and uh, I'm Adam Chuliper. I was... Here for a lot of the day yesterday, gonna be here for a lot of the day today. Great day, I'm a technical evangelist uh, with Microsoft. I'm out of Southern California. Been working many years as a software architect. Uh, check me out on Adam Tuliper at Twitter. And why don't we get rolling to talk about some really cool stuff and where we're gonna go with the day today. We're gonna start with optimizing your games. Then we're gonna go into ALM and Unity, learn about uh, Visual Studio Online and source control with Unity. Tobias got a great talk on marketing and monetizing your application, a, an area that developers greatly lack in. Using Prime 31 to connect your Unity game to Azure comes in Module 9. And finally, in Module 10, adding the finishing touches, integrating with things like live tiles and some platform features to make your game just pop a little bit more. Cool. All right, let's get started with optimizing your game, shall we? Yeah, the, the single most important part. The single before most you, important part. Before you part. ship your product or anything's done, you always have to optimize. And that's just to guarantee a couple things, right? One, you want to make sure your game runs super smooth, and this is the smooth. best way to do it. You want to make sure there's no hiccups or any extra memory hog issues, anything like that. This is what optimizing your game is all about. So there's a couple of topics we're going to copy over this, but I think to start, we're going to go over uh, baking, baking light. Baking light, we're going to do optimizing draw calls, we're going to be doing compression, uh, coding techniques, we're going to be talking about terrain and skyboxes yep. and reducing geometry. Now, this is not a completely all-encompassing list, but these are some good things to get you started. Yeah. And so let's go ahead and start with Baking Light, what Baking Light is all about. Absolutely. So Baking Light in Unity, there's a third-party engine, Beast, from Illuminate Labs. This essentially, Baking Light, calculates lighting for all the static objects in your scene. Static objects are objects that aren't going to move, as opposed to ones that are charged with electricity and shocking during the winter. Mm -hmm. These are static objects, they're not gonna move anywhere. Uh, calculates the lighting for them, how light is gonna hit them, and opposed to doing it at runtime, calculates it all ahead of time, saves it out to a texture. So the pros for that is it gives you much better performance because it's not having to do all these calculations at runtime. And while hardware has really come a long way and it can do a lot of this at runtime, yep. it's better to save it for the cooler stuff in your games, like little zombie guys running around and stuff like that. Absolutely. The downside of this technique is uh, it takes up potentially a lot of space to calculate. You'll see in your project, uh, it can definitely grow quite a bit, and it also does not apply to dynamic objects. Yeah. This is just static, uh, but we are gonna talk about dynamic objects with yeah. light probes and how to handle light probes as well. Now, there are some techniques to kind of fake that whole process, but make it seem like it's actually running in real time, which is great. So we'll show you those as well. Let's talk about the process here. Uh, very important to do things, for the most part, in this order. And I, so it seems sometimes when I go through this, I kind of miss a step at time. So it's good to have it kind of written out must mark all the objects that you want lit up as static. And we'll show you a demo of this shortly. If you don't do that, they're not gonna be included in this little map that Unity is gonna create. So if you want dynamic lighting, then you need to place what are called light probes around your scene that detect how the light is going to hit those points at various times for your dynamic objects. And uh, Matt's gonna show off a demo of that shortly. The other important thing is turn down ambient light in your scene. Now, Matt, why would you want to turn down ambient light? So your ambient light is kind of like your, you can think of it as like the shadows in your scene, right? The darker you make your ambient light, the darker your shadows are gonna be. It's kind of the it's the, the places that aren't lit, essentially. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with ambient light, and a couple of those would be, you know, you can actually change like the whole tone of your level just by changing the ambience and changing the darks and the, and the color of the darks. You know, maybe the darks aren't essentially black, maybe they're more of like blues or reds, just to kind of give it a different feel. Things with that that work great are when 
when you're doing like daytime lighting or if you're doing like kind of mood lighting in different settings for Set night and stuff like your, that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Set the mood of your game. I mean, right. essentially, yeah, you're, you're creating mood lighting it's for your game. Lit. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, candlelight, you probably want to do like nice like dark reds and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Dinner on my mind already and it's still early in the morning. <laughs> More importantly, what are we having for dinner today? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, then you'll want, after you turn on your ambient light, so kind of like the background, uh, the, the glow in your game, uh, usually always has a little bit of uh, light color in your scene. So you're going to turn on the ambient light, um, then you're going to set your quality settings because you can, you can really define on how hardcore you want that light calculation to take place, uh, how, how yeah. good you want all those uh, light and shadows to look on there. That's something to keep note of too, because when you, do, when you work on the, the quality settings of the light, that it really depends on the PC you're using too. If you're using like a really, really hardcore PC and you wanna really get amazing lights baked, crank those settings up high, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take you hours probably to get a really, <laughs> the really longer, nice. Yes. Yeah, the higher the settings, the longer the baking process takes. But if you're using like, you know, a laptop that's not exactly, you know, up to, up to snuff as like a rendering machine or anything like that, maybe crank the settings down to do a quick bake. But what that'll do is that'll give you an idea, right? And when you're looking at your level, which we'll go over when we go over the, the demo and light baking, you're not gonna get an exact result of what the baking is actually going to look like when you have your finished product. It just kind of gives you an idea when you're, yeah. even when you're not baked, you're just kind of getting a loose reference. That's why you want to do a quick bake at low settings, just to kind of get an idea of what the lights are going to look like. And you're going to have little refraction errors and different rendering errors in there because when the settings are so low, it can't process all that information, it's right? It's a trade-off, those maps are smaller. It's a trade-off, you have smaller faster. maps, exactly. So the memory, you know, it's, it's not going to do it exactly how you want it, but it's gonna give you a good idea. So I always recommend when I'm doing my baking, first thing I do is I do, yeah, when, I, <laughs> when, I, when I'm baking, um, what, you're, what you're doing, it's actually like baking. Like you're putting, you're putting something, you, you know, you're setting a timer on it, you're letting it go, and then it, it finishes, right? There's and you get the finished oven. product. We're gonna put in our cake in the uni oven and yeah. get it at 350. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cake, food, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, baking takes a while, right? Just yeah. like normal baking, baking takes a while. <laughs> so you're, you're, uh, you're, you're gonna, you wanna do a quick bake first, kinda just see what it's gonna look like. And then once you kinda get an idea, okay, that's going in the direction I want, it has the colors on there I want, then you can crank those settings up up or maybe go to a higher powered machine, really put some heavy settings on there and get a really good bake done. And I recommend that for just before you go to production, right? I mean, not production, but release, right? When your release candidate's almost ready, that's when you wanna take the time and get those really, really great light bakes going. And that's like your massive light bakes for your levels, like the overview light bakes that, that encompass everything, right? And it's gonna take hours to get those done. What's the longest that you've ever had to wait for a light to bake in a scene that you've, on a game you've worked on? I think the, the longest so far, I mean, I've only been doing mobile, but to get really good ones, I think the longest one I did was like 12 hours. 12 hours. And that was wow. like a really, really complicated <laughs> level with lots and lots of lights. I'll like, bake this. I'll get thousands of lights. Back. This will be done. And you're just waiting. Yeah, yeah. Like the shadows were out of control. There was all kinds of oh, things wow. going on. So, <laughs> so but af after you bake the light, uh, one of the important, important things to remember turn off the lights in your scene when you're. Yes, you're done baking. a lot of people forget to do that. So what you want to do is after you do your light baking, you've got this really great well-baked scene, which is essentially, light baking, I don't know if people know, what it, what it basically does is it's applying almost like a, a vertex layer, vertex color layer over all of your geometry. So it's essentially faking a layer of lit color over everything. So it appears that everything's lit, but essentially it's it's not. It's just kind of faked. And, and, the, and nobody will know when they're playing the game, right? Unless you're doing dynamic lights and like the sun's moving from one point to another, that's when you're gonna use actual lighting. And even then you might do a combination of, of light baking and some type of other dynamic lighting system. But one of the things you really wanna remember is after you get that light baking done, always go in and turn your lights off because you're not going to need them. Like it's, it's just extra. There's no reason to have them there unless you're going for a specific effect that requires those lights to be on. But if you're not, turn them off. It's gonna look great and it's gonna run a lot faster. You're gonna save on a ton of draw calls and your game's just gonna be sped way up. And turn your ambient light back up afterwards. So beforehand, you turn your light down call. Yeah. and then uh, bake it, turn your lights off, turn that ambient light back up, so you gotta remember that initial value, and you'll demo that when you kind of go over this here. Yeah, and, and I, I would say, I, I always do forget to turn the ambient <laughs> light back on, but you'll notice right away when you play your game and your characters look very dark, or the oh. color of like the shadows, and you're like, what is going yeah. on? Um, when you do light probes, you won't notice it as much, but definitely turn that ambience back up because it's gonna do two things. I think it's, for, from a stylistic standpoint, it's gonna kind of improve the, the visibility of your characters and, and overall characters in your scene. And anything that's dynamic, you're gonna see a little bit better. So just, it's a, a rule of thumb for me. I always 
just go back in, have a little note to myself, go in, turn that ambience back up, and then you're ready to go. So turn this, those lights off. This, uh, this slide deck sheet that we have here, uh -huh. print that up and tack it to the wall. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. it's a good rule of thumb, yeah, absolutely. Remember, yeah, all the red, turn off lights in the scene, I should actually uh, highlight in red there, turn ambient back up. <laughs> So let's go on and move on to a demo for baking light and setting 